Hello there, Schwilly family friends. I am Corey Wilkins coming to you from my studio, Ears Only Audio, here in El Cajon, California. Uh, I'm accompanied for this video by my lovely daughter, Emily. Emily, say hello. Hi. <laughs> uh, she's four years old, and she is very much into audio. Even helps me write automation for fade-outs on songs sometimes. It's pretty amazing. Um, so there have been questions that have come up about recording and mixing and such and I just wanted to make a few videos specifically for uh, the Schwilly family group kind of going over some things that I've had the opportunity to learn um, firsthand through interning and, and working at my friend Jeff's studio and a lot of people you know watch mixing videos we've been talking a lot about recording revolution and produce like a pro and, and stuff like that and there's amazing content available on YouTube, far superior to anything that I might produce um, as far as YouTube content goes. But the thing of it is, is it's very easy to create a video that's like a simple mix trick. That's how to EQ a vocal or how to use compression on a drum bus or something like that. They're all very linear, very one, one process. Um, ideas where you can show your screen uh, and people can see the exact moves that you make. Is what there isn't very much of is how to get the sound source to be amazing to begin with. Any engineer worth their salt will tell you that a great mix starts with a great recording and without a great recording no matter what you do you'll never get a great mix. So I wanted to kind of make a few videos to sort of delve in to the recording aspect. So what I want to do right now is show a couple of microphones and just sort of tell you the differences. And I promise whenever I show gear, it'll be inexpensive because that's all I can afford. <laughs> this is a large diaphragm condenser. You can get this for under $200. It is a CAD M179. It's a multi-pattern condenser microphone. Chances are, for 90% of the stuff you're going to record, especially if you are in an untreated room uh, or a room that just doesn't naturally sound fantastic, you're going to be using it in cardioid. All that means is it picks up sound out the front and it rejects sound out the sides and out the back. You could go into Omni where it picks up sound all around. You go into Figure 8 where it picks up sound from the front and from the back but rejects out the sides. And we'll talk more about that later. So this is a condenser microphone. It requires 48 volt phantom power. This is very common on vocals because condensers are known for their richness and detail for their extended high and low end um, that you don't get as much in a dynamic. Most commonly condensers are used for vocals, acoustic guitars, um, drum overheads, pianos, Things like that. Anything where you want like a nice, clear, full frequency range. This next microphone is the world famous SM57. It is a dynamic microphone. It's been used on just about every recording you've ever heard in your life. This goes for about a hundred bucks. Um, the great thing about this microphone is it's virtually indestructible. It can take extremely high sound pressure levels. Um, it is a fixed cardioid pattern, meaning it always just picks up sound from here and rejects sound from here and rejects sound from here. Okay? Um, these are very commonly used on things like snare drums, tom-toms, uh, electric guitars. Almost every electric guitar cab you've ever heard in your whole life has been mic'd up with an SM57. Um, they can be really great on very aggressive singers. Um, and, and there's absolutely no shame in doing vocals into an SM57. Now, if you're starting your home studio and all you have is these two microphones or, or microphones that are in these same classes, I would definitely say you need one of these at least, one of the, an SM57. You have to have one. You should also have a, a condenser, but it doesn't have to be this one. There are, there are others out there that are also amazing. This CAD M179 I just found is a really great value for the money. So there's a couple other main choices. This is a small diaphragm condenser. 
I can't remember the model number. I got it as part of a drum pack once, uh, like years ago. This is a little bit brighter. It has a lot of detail in the top end. If I'm doing like a, a heavier rock record, I'll use this on drum overheads. Uh, this can sound really phenomenal on mandolin, fiddle. Not exactly the first microphone you'd want to get. If, if you could only have one microphone, this wouldn't be it. But it can be a really effective choice for those applications. Another really great one. This is a ribbon microphone. This is a Samson VR88. Um, Samson has made some very cheap microphones in their day, but this is actually a very great sounding microphone. It, it sort of has the sound of an old vintage ribbon microphone. Now, the ribbons in general, and this one is no exception, come in a fixed figure eight, or if you're British, you'll hear it called a figure of eight pattern, meaning it picks up sound from here, it picks up sound from here, but it rejects sound from the sides. You can do a lot of really cool things with a ribbon mic. They tend to be a little bit darker. They roll off the top end. And the way that they, they get convert sound into electricity is um, they you, you vibrate a little aluminum ribbon inside of here. And that's what creates the sound as opposed to this using like a, a, a voice coil and a magnet or this one using like phantom power um, which sends electricity through the actual microphone cable. So let's dive in and see what each of these sound like on a voice. Check, check, check. This is the CAD M179 large diaphragm condenser microphone. Uh, great for vocals, acoustic guitar, anything where you want a lot of detail, a lot of definition, especially in the top end. A little bit of extended low end over what you can get with a traditional dynamic microphone. CAD M179, it can be had for a little under $200. All right, check one, two. This is a Shure SM57 recording studio staple pretty much since forever. Snare drums, electric guitar, aggressive vocals, tom-toms, sometimes even bass guitars and kick drums. In fact, the first Van Halen record, uh, it was an SM57 on Alex's kick drum. Uh, this can be had at your local music shop for about $100. Sure SM57 dynamic microphone. Okay, this is the Samson VR88 ribbon microphone. Um, not always the first one you would want to have for your home studio, but when you start to look for some different sounds and want a, con uh, a setup that's a little bit more sophisticated, ribbons can be a great addition to your mic locker. They can be really fantastic on drum overheads if you want to try and dull down some really bright cymbals or if you're recording a jazz combo or something like that where you don't want so much hype in the cymbals. They can be fantastic on vocals. They can also be fantastic on electric guitars. They are a little bit more sensitive to certain things, so read about them a little bit and um, use the proper precautions when you're using them. I'm actually living dangerously right now, not using a pop filter on this ribbon microphone. Air movement can destroy your ribbon, and uh, you would need to get it repaired. Uh, this particular microphone runs for about $150. Um, I think you can get them at Sam Ash. I think it's kind of their brand now. You can also probably get them online. Great value for money. Okay, this is the small diaphragm condenser microphone of unknown origin. I got it in a drum microphone kit way back in the day. I don't even remember what brand it is, and since I can't see to read it on the side, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It was intended for drum overheads. It sounds good on that if you want brighter cymbals, especially like if it's a hard rock or metal kind of band that you're looking to record where you don't want as much of the kick and the snare and the toms of in your overheads, but you want the high frequency content from the cymbals. 
It also really shines sometimes on acoustic guitar if you want a really bright acoustic guitar sound. Um, and it really shines on things like mandolin and fiddle instruments that are acoustic and that have a lot of upper mid and, and high frequency content uh, naturally. This is a really good mic to pick that up. Not exactly the first one I would grab if I were recording vocals. Um, as you can hear, my S's are very S-y <laughs> through this thing. So that would be a nightmare in the mix. Um, I will not say that I would never use it on vocals because there might be a time where I think that sounds really cool. I can't imagine what that would be. But one thing we need to really be careful of and steer clear of is getting this idea into our heads that there's vocal mics and instrument mics or or vocal mics, lead vocal mics, backing vocal mics, I mean kick drum mics, snare drum mics, guitar mics. People will want to try and separate these things into all sorts of different arbitrary categories and it just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, a microphone doesn't know what it's picking up. It's just a transducer that hears an analog sound and changes it into an electrical signal to be processed by your computer. So now you know what the four major types of microphones sound like. The next video is going to be some very common mic placements for very commonly home recorded instruments like acoustic guitars and vocals. Thanks so much again for watching. I'm Corey Wilkins from Ears Only Audio in El Cajon. And uh, if you have any questions, please do feel free to leave it in the comments section below and I will do my best to answer it or find somebody who knows the answer better than I do. All right. Thanks again.